So that's the 46 parts. Now, someone recently asked me of what practical use is any of this? You know, what can I do with this? You know, other than, you know, just sort of a mental exercise, mental curiosity. <clears throat> and to me, the great power of this symbol is that it brings an understanding, a deep understanding of the cosmos and how it's all put together. You know, it, it's rationale, if you will. Why does any of this, why are we here? <laughs> what is this all about? It brings an understanding of that. And, you know, it answers those big questions that human beings have always been asking of existence. Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? You know, etc. And I find those answers in this symbol. Rather, the symbol guides me to those answers. You know, it's, it's the cosmos that provides the answers, but this symbol somehow translates those into terms that I can uh, grab hold of intellectually and experientially. Because, see, I treat the, the tree of life as, you know, a physical structure, like it is, well, it is a map, essentially. But it's a, a multidimensional map that I can go visit these various parts of. I can travel along these connections, these paths, these connections between these static states of awareness and experience them using this structure, this structure of ideas. It's a philosophical structure. The one thing that it shouts out is that all, everything, is awareness. It's all the I. It's all Kether. You know, it's all one self. Self-realizing. And that's in that self-realization, that experience of the I self-realizing itself, that we have all of our universe. You know, this is all, this is all the result of that self-realization. And this symbol tells us how that actually happens, how the I becomes material, how Kether becomes Malkuth. Now, one thing that we must remember about Malkuth is that it's not just the material realm, well, that the material realm of Malkuth is not just material. You know, it's not just these physical things that we experience. It's the whole tree empties into Malkuth. So Malkuth is astral, mental, and eternal at the same time that it is material. Within the material, in conjunction with the material reality, is this astral, mental, and eternal reality. It's all there within the material realm. So this symbol invites us to explore all of that within the material realm. And in doing so, we become powerful participants in the cosmos. That's what this symbol does, is it invites us to participate. <clears throat> One way we do that is through the work of initiation and dramatics. I mean, that develops our abilities as human beings to actively participate in the cosmos. This symbol expands beyond 
what is just what is in initiation and hermetics takes us beyond those limitations to participation in the whole cosmos, okay? Now, <clears throat> part of how it illustrates that the I becomes Malkuth, the material realm, is it postulates four different realms and subsequently four different bodies, okay? We have our physical bodies here in Malkuth, but we also have an astral body, which is that medium that connects us with our mental body, our actual awareness. And that is connected to a eternal mental body, a greater self. Okay, so we have this eternal mental body, the I, the, the greater self, the awareness, the root awareness, and then we have this little reflection of the I, our temporal mental body, the awareness that, hello, <laughs> your awareness. And then we have the after body, which for us is the emotional body where we experience significance and interaction with other, okay? And then we have our physical body, which we need in order to move around and interact in the physical realm, which is the summation of the self-realization of the I. <clears throat> and it also, <clears throat> one of the interesting sort of doctrines uh, of the tree is a doctrine of infinities, I'll call it, okay? So, it starts with the I. The I is infinite. It is everything all together. Not just every material thing, but everything that exists, that awareness, is the I, and it is infinite. <laughs> There's no other way to put it, it is infinite. And in that I, there is infinite meaning. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> there is infinite meaning. Hokma, essential meaning is infinite, truly infinite. And so is form. Essential form is infinite. There are an infinite number of expressions of that infinite amount of essential meaning. Then in Tiferet, there are an infinite number of solitary cells, each of which expresses part of that infinite array of essential meaning, okay? And, consequently, there are an infinite number of sentient selves because that infinite number of solitary selves are, you know, uh, incarnating into material existence as the the I self-realizes, the infinite I self-realizes, it has an infinite number of sentient selves that self-realize. And likewise, there are, of course, an infinite number of physical selves. The universe is infinite at every level. Now that's really something to wrap your brain around and well worth the effort meditating on that concept of infinity and of infinities within infinities, okay? Enclosed infinities, discrete infinities that are within themselves infinite, just like the temporal realm is itself infinite, 
but it is, you know, just a part of the infinite eternal realm. So, infinities within infinities. And that's what the tree of life shows us. Ultimately, the cosmos has infinite meaning, infinite time, and infinite space. Now, infinite meaning we encounter in Hokma. Infinite time, I've already talked about, infinite change in this <clears throat> Beth Shin crossing between Hokma and Bina <clears throat> with fire and Saturn. And then infinite sequence between Gedula and Gebura and Resh crossing, Aleph Resh crossing, infinite sequence, and then infinite duration. Down here between Netzach and Hod, the path of Mem, mother letter of water, where it crosses the moon, Tal. Infinite duration. So that's infinite time. Here in the temporal realm, time is endless. Time is infinite. In the supernal realm, there is no time. It just is. Outside of time, it is infinite. And here in Malkuth, space, infinite space, the universe, the physical universe is infinite. That is essential doctrine of Kabbalah. And in my experience, objectively true. <clears throat> but what is space? Where does space come from? In Tiferet, we first encounter other. We have the self, the, the solitary self, amidst an ocean of other. So we have self and other. It's when the whole realm from Tiferet down is about this interaction between self and other. This is how the process of this, the I self-realizing in the temporal realm is this relationship between self and other repeated an infinite number of times in an infinite number of ways. That is how the self gets to know itself, how the I gets to know itself. So, this relationship between self and other, when it gets down to the material reality, that translates as space, the distance between self and other. And that is infinite. The distance between self and other is everything between zero and infinity. Okay? Excuse me. So in that sense, space is infinite. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> that is the use I make of the tree of life. I explore the cosmos through this diagram. I take it from a diagram and make it moving through ideas, through concepts. And that's what the universe is made of. It's all awareness. And awareness, the <laughs> The 
milieu of awareness. What awareness deals in is ideas, thoughts, concepts, philosophical ideas. And that's what the tree of life, it's a philosophical structure. And that is how I explore the cosmos. And so what I will do in the next set of videos is I will talk about each one of the 182 gates of the Graw Tree of Life. And this is one of the methods that I use for exploring the cosmos through this philosophical structure. Okay? I will talk about each one of the gates, describe how you work that gate, what you can expect to encounter, what sort of results, what you will gain from working each gate. And that's going to take probably quite a while to go through these videos and talk about each of the gates, because some of them are very brief, but a lot of them are very lengthy and involved. So this will be a, a long set of videos. But before I do that, I want to just uh, end with a, an interesting uh, little snippet of something that I have learned about the Tree of Life through making um, my radiators, which generate the cathode brilliance. The structure I use to build a, a, a radiator, the mechanism, is a truncated octahedron. And that presents 14 different faces, 10 of which I use. And through each of those 10 faces, I put a double terminated quartz crystal, clear quartz crystal, um, centered on a clear quartz sphere in the center, um, basically touching that sphere. And I, I tune each of these uh, double terminated crystals to uh, the sephiroth. And in creating that, I realize that there are oppositions. There's five against five. Now, that's, that's fairly important in the Sephira Yitzir. It's mentioned in several places that the, the Sephira are divided into sets of five which each oppose each other. But it's not really oppositions. Mm. It's more groupings. They are each related very significantly to each other in these pairings, if we will. Okay? So what I've discovered through the form, putting it in a three-dimensional form instead of just a two-dimensional form like the Tree of Life, um, is that Kether is opposite Malkuth, quite logically. Hokma is opposite hot. Let that sink in for a second, okay? Bina is opposite Netzach. Okay? Tiferet is opposite Yesa. Okay? And Gedula is opposite Gebura. So again, these aren't really oppositions as much as they are pairings. <clears throat> so, Cather and Malkuth, you know, they are basically the same thing. They're not opposites, they are paired, you know. They're the two extremes of a one thing, okay? Hokma <clears throat> and Hod, the wisdom of essential meaning and the intellect, the human intellect and that power to decide, these are very closely related, okay? And Bina, eternal form, essential form, 
the greater self and Netzach, the, the self that resonates, then the emotional self, again, are closely related. Okay? Tiferet, the solitary self, and Yesod, the sentient self, these are very closely related. They're not opposites, but they're related, very intimately related, okay? The, the sentient self simply does not exist without the solitary self. That's its whole purpose, is to enable the solitary self to incarnate into physical reality. And Gedula and Gebura are related, directly related. The collective awareness and the unique individual awareness are without each other. I mean, they are essential to each other. The collective is powerless without the individual powers. The individual powers are meaningless without the collective without that context of the collective, okay? So, interestingly, all these pairings intersect that Aleph Resh crossing, the air and the sun, Aleph and Resh, the center, the very heart, functional beating heart of the tree of life. So, on that note, I will end today, and next time I will be coming to you with the beginning of my uh, telling the tale of the 182 gates of the Gra Tree of Life. Okay? Till then, bye-bye.